Hello everybody, welcome to Gravitation Tutorial. Let's look at question 8. A planet of mass m is in circular orbit of radius x around a star of mass big M. So here's a star with a mass big M, and here's a planet with a mass m, and they are in circular orbit around the star. The planet and the star may be considered as point masses. The planet has an angular velocity omega around the orbit with the star and the radius of the orbit is x. So that omega and x are related by the expression omega squared equals to x cubed. Now, what we need to start is over here. We need to write down this statement that the gravitational force on the planet provides for the centripetal force. So I'm going to do the live working over here and repeat uh, whatever you see on the left hand side to show you how it's done. So after we write gravitational force, provide centripetal force, we can write the gravitational force equation. Gmm over x squared provides for the centripetal force. M r omega squared. So if we cancel out the small m's and we move the x squared to the right, we get Gm equals to x cubed omega squared. Now what this means is that for any planet in this star system, the product of the radius of the orbit cube and the angular velocity of the planet squared will be a constant. So this gives us a very handy relationship. In fact, for any planetary system, it will allow us to find out the mass of the planet or the mass of the sun. Let's move on to the next question. All right. A planet uh, E, which is this distance from the center of the sun, uh, takes exactly one Earth year to complete one orbit. Calculate the planet j or the period of j in the same star system uh, if the planet j has an orbital radius of 7.82 now uh, you know uh, just as a funny note uh, e is probably earth and jupiter is probably j okay so now we have this relationship that gm equals to r cube omega squared is a constant right in this star system it's a constant because the mass of, this is the mass of the sun is uh, going to be constant for this system okay so what we can say is that r e squared uh, r e cube omega e squared is equals to r j cube omega j squared i'll be very careful with indices so we'll fill in the values 1.5 times 10 times to the power of 11 cube multiplied by 2 pi over 1 year squared is equals to 7.82 times 10 to the power of 11 cubed multiplied by 2 pi divided by the period of Jupiter squared. Now if we put this into a graphing calculator and do the equation solver, we can easily find that t is equals to 11.9 years. Okay, so when Earth takes one year to go around the sun. Jupiter takes actually 12 years to go around the sun. And the further out you go, you know, the planets on the outside of the solar system take a very, very long time, sometimes hundreds of years to go around the sun. Now let's take a look at question 9. A satellite is in circular orbit around the Earth with an orbital radius of 6610 km. This is a trap. With a speed of 7780 meters per second, the satellite activates its engine to boost into a higher orbit of radius 6890 times 10 to the power 3. Given that the mass of the Earth is this, show that the speed of satellite in the new orbit is 7620. Now, how do we begin this question? We begin this question by stating that the gravitational force provides for the centripetal force for the satellite. Now, I'm going to do the live working over here. All right. So when we say that gravitational force provides for centripetal force, we write GMM over R squared is equals to MV squared over R. Now this is a satellite's mass, so we cancel on both sides. Okay, and over here we'll cancel the R like that. So that gives us V is equals to square root GM over R. Now, so then we need to put in all the variables because this is a show question so we need to show the complete substitution 6.67 times 10 to the power of 11 multiplied by the mass of the earth 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24 divided by the radius of the new orbit which is 6 uh, 8 
9, 0 times 10 to the power of 3. This gives us to 7620 meters per second. So what do you notice? You notice that um, when the satellite is boosted to a higher orbit, when the satellite is boosted to a higher orbit, the speed actually went down. This is 7780, this is 7620. So the velocity of the satellite actually decreased. All right. Um, yeah. So as satellites travel further away from the orbits are further away from the planet, the speed of the orbit actually goes down. Now the mass of the satellite is 120 kilograms. Given that the satellite moves from one orbit to another, calculate the change in its kinetic energy. So this is uh, easy to calculate. We can calculate the old Ke1 will be half mv squared. All right, that will be half multiplied by 120, which is the mass of a satellite, multiplied by um, the original speed, which is 7780 k squared. And then the Ke2 will be equals to half times 120 multiplied by the new speed, 7620 squared. And then if we talk about the change of the Ke, it's Ke2 minus Ke1 will be minus 1.48 times 10 to the power of 8 joules. So you can see that actually there is a loss in the kinetic energy okay, of 1.48 times 10 to the power of 8 joules. Now what does this mean? This means that when you go into a higher orbit, some of your uh, kinetic energy is uh, actually used up okay, to put into your gravitational potential energy, uh, even though you fire a rocket engine. So the, en the energy of the rocket engine does not actually all translate into kinetic energy. Okay? Now, let's take a look over here, gravitational potential energy. Now, what is the change in GPE? So we know that uh, the GPE all right, uh, is given by the following formula. U is equals to minus GMM over R. So this is U1 and then that's U2. So therefore, U2 okay, is minus GMM over R2. So therefore, the change in the gravitational potential energy, which is U2 minus U1, will be equals to minus GMM over uh, wait, we need to put in the values here. Okay, this is um, 6 times 10 to the power of 24 multiplied by 120, okay, divided by the uh, first, uh, uh, the first orbit, which is uh, 6, uh, the second orbit, which is 6890 times 10 to the power of 3, then minus of the minus, uh, well, actually, I should put 6.67 times 10 to the power of 11. That's 6.67 times 10 to the power of 11 times 6 times 10 to the power of 24 times 120 divided by 6610 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay, so we can see that the GPE is actually gaining 2.95 times 10 to the power of 8 joules. So there is a gain in the GPE. Okay. And the gain in the GPE is larger than the loss in the Ke. So basically what happens is that when you move out to a higher orbit, your GP goes up, but your Ke is, some of the Ke is converted to GPE, so the Ke actually falls. So what is the change in total energy? The change in total energy, okay, will be your change in Ke plus change in Pe, will be 1.47 times 10 to the power of 8. So here are some uh, pointers to note, okay. The pointers to note is that, when you move to a higher orbit, that means higher orbit means further from the planet, okay? And this must be a circular orbit, circular orbit. Okay, so what are your energy changes? First of all, your total energy will increase, okay? So your total energy will increase by, let's say, a certain value E, okay? The total energy will increase by a certain value E your kinetic energy will decrease by the same amount of energy, okay? So your total energy will increase by E as well, okay? That means to say you lose uh, a change in Ke, 
your change in ke is negative e all right minus e all right so so quite interesting and then what about your gain in gpe your gain in gpe will be okay 2e okay so that means that when you move to a higher orbit your gpe increases by a value 2e your total energy increases by a value e and then your ke will decrease by a value e so this is the relationship between the ke total energy and gpe whenever an orbit is changed all right so what is the work done by the rocket engine the work done by the rocket engine uh is the change in the total energy which is the value will be e all right so the value will be e right so um whenever whenever you have a rocket engine firing let's say your rocket engine will use up a uh, e amount of fuel then your total energy of the orbit will increase by e your k will decrease by e and your gain gp will be 2e so you can see that most of the energy of the rocket engine actually goes towards increasing the gpe okay the ke itself actually decreases okay so this is some of the stuff that peculiar to uh, orbital mechanics if you ever want to uh, fire your own spaceship into space uh, this is some of the stuff that you need to understand a satellite orbits the earth with a speed v in a circular path of radius r the gravitational field strength at the orbit of the satellite is g show that the speed v is given by the expression v equals to square root gr now let's take a look at the way to start we always start the same way the centripetal force is provided by gravitational force so we can write the centripetal force here is provided by gravitational force now if we uh move with uh we uh, cancel out the amps on both sides right we find that gm over r squared is equals to g right but g is equals to gm over r squared so this means that v equals to square root gr hence show that the total energy of the satellite is given by the expression total energy is equals to minus half mgr where m is the mass of the satellite now the total energy is the sum of the ke and the gpe of the satellite so we can write that the total energy is the sum of the ke and the gpe so however uh, let's note that we use this relationship v equals to square root gr so what this means is that half mv squared will be equals to half m gr now uh, also we note from uh, over here gmm over r now gmm over r can be written as minus gmm over r squared times r and this can be written as minus gm r sorry yeah minus uh, gm r over here okay so what this means is that the total energy will be equals to half mgr minus mgr and that will be equals to minus half mgr okay so why is the total energy negative remember in order to escape to infinity right your energy must be at least zero so if you don't have at least zero energy meaning that if your energy is negative you cannot escape to infinity so the negative total energy means that the satellite does not have sufficient energy to escape from earth's gravitational field and is therefore captured in earth orbit so you know you think about earth's orbit as the as the as the deep hole in the rubber sheet of uh, potential the satellite cannot climb out of this hole because it doesn't have enough energy now as the satellite orbits the earth it encounters friction with molecules of the air of the edge earth's atmosphere state whether the total energy increases or decreases now when you encounter uh, friction with a little bit of air all right your total energy uh, your energy is lost so therefore your total energy will decrease 
but a decrease in total energy means that it becomes more negative. So the total energy will decrease and hence become more negative. Now what happens if your total energy decreases and you become and your uh, uh, total energy gets more negative. Now remember that in different uh, orbits all right, around the Earth, in different circular orbits around the Earth, each orbit has a total energy. All right? So this orbit has the lowest total energy and this orbit has the highest total energy. Now if you lose total energy, all right, if, you, if your satellite decreases in energy, then you will slowly go from this orbit to this orbit to this orbit. Now this is what happens when you lose uh, energy until eventually you collide with the Earth. Now, however, what happens when you go to a lower and lower orbit? Now, the orbit out here has the highest GPE and the orbit down here has the lowest GPE. But the orbit out here has the lowest Ke and the orbit out, out down here has the highest Ke. So think about how the energies uh, change okay, as you move closer and further away from the planet in different orbits. Now as the total energy becomes more negative, the radius of the orbit will decrease. All right, so as the radius of the orbit decreases, the orbital speed v increases. So actually, it goes faster here, faster, and then it goes slower here. Okay, so the further out from the planet you go in the orbit, okay, the orbital speed will be slower. Okay, but you have higher GPE. Okay, that's how it works. Okay, so um, that will be all for question 10. Now let's move on to question 11. A satellite is placed in geostationary orbit above the Earth. Explain what is meant by the term geostationary orbit. Now, geostationary orbit has a period of 24 hours and the object will remain stationary in the sky relative to an observer on Earth. Now, why must a stationary satellite be placed vertically above the equator? Now, it, the orbit must be on the same plane as the equator if the orbit was inclined. All right, so this is the equator, all right, this is, this is Singapore. Now, if the orbit was inclined like that, so this is the inclined orbit, then after 12 hours, over here, this is at 6, uh, 6 uh, a.m., all right? So at 6 a.m., the satellite will be in the north, okay? But then uh, later on, uh, at 6 p.m., the 6 p.m., when the Earth and Singapore has rotated over here, then the orbit, then the satellite will look like it's in the south. So this means that the satellite will appear to move north and south over a six, uh, a 12 hour period. So 6 a.m. is over here. Then as the Earth rotates, 6 p.m. is now over here. And then 6 a.m. is over here again. Now this is terrible because if you have a radar dish that is pointing towards the satellite, then your radar dish needs to move every six hours. And that's very, very inconvenient. Okay, so what? So uh, that's why the geostationary orbit should be at the equator, because if it's at the equator, then at six a.m. the satellite is straight upwards, and then at six p.m. the satellite is also straight upwards. So you can you only need to put your satellite dish like straight up, and the satellite will always be there, whether it's six a.m. or six p.m. Okay, so that's why the geostationary satellite must be placed vertically over the equator because if the orbit was inclined, the satellite would drift <clears throat> north and south once every 12 hours. Okay, now why must a geostationary satellite be moved from west to east? Because it must follow the direction of the rotation of Earth. Otherwise, it will be going in the opposite direction of Earth and will not be stationary. Why? is a satellite in a geostationary orbit often used for telecommunication. The satellite always stays in the same position in the sky and can easily be tracked by ground-based antenna. So let's say that you have a house and you want to install satellite television, which we don't have in Singapore because the government has banned it. 
Okay, but if you want to have satellite television, then you can just have a satellite receiver, okay, that is pointing straight at the geosynchronous, uh, geostationary satellite. Okay, now if this satellite was moving, if the satellite was moving, then you will need to also move the antenna along with it. So the antenna has to turn. But this is very expensive. Uh, most people who live in houses would not want to have a motorized satellite receiver. So they just want to install the satellite TV on the roof and forget about it for the next few years. So that's why uh, geostationary satellites are great for TV broadcasts. Okay, so the satellite always stays in the same position in the sky and can easily be tracked by a stationary ground-based antenna. Okay, next, the stationary satellites, geostationary satellites are also, okay, um, fixed in relation to other geostationary satellites. So this is the Earth, okay, and this is the ring of geostationary satellites around it. Now, because these are stationary with respect to Earth, so the the, the, the positions of the satellites are always known to every other satellite. So let's say you want to communicate, someone over here wants to talk to the person who is over here. So what you do is that you broadcast your signal to the satellite. The satellite will then bounce off the other satellites and then rebroadcast it to the person over here. Now this was in the days before there was undersea uh, internet cables, but uh, satellite uh, phones okay use this technology where you bounce off the satellite your signal is bounced around the satellite until it comes back to earth okay this enables signal to be relayed easily allowing communication between points on the ground which are on opposite sides of the earth all right now let's go on to question 12 one third of star systems in the milky way galaxy are binary star systems where two stars orbit the combined center of mass. So in this case, the two stars are moving around, okay, like two children on a merry-go-round, okay, orbiting the center of mass. The mass of, the, in this uh, star system, it's a simplified binary star system where the two stars are of the same mass m and the separation is 2r. The speed of each star is also the same at v. What is the expression for the centripetal force on one of the stars? So let's take a look at this star over here. This star over here of mass m is moving at a speed v and therefore it will need to have a centripetal force, okay, which is not actually a force, but it's a centripetal force required. Okay, the centripetal force required will be equals to m v squared over the radius to the center, which is r, right? So radius to the center is r, this r and this r. So the centripetal force on one of the stars is mv squared over r. What about the gravitational force of attraction between the stars? Now the gravitational force of attraction between the stars will be given by the two masses, the product of the two masses m and m, as well as the square of the distance between the stars. So the, centri sorry, the centripetal force of attraction between the stars will be gmm over 2r squared. This will be g m squared over 4 r squared. Now, hence show that the orbital speed of the stars is given by this formula. Now, as always, during orbital motion questions, we start the equation the same way. We write centripetal force is provided by gravitational force. The centripetal force on the star will be m v squared over r, and the gravitational force on the stars will be m g m squared over 4 r squared. Now, we can cancel out the m on one side, we can cancel out the r on one side, then we get v is equals to square root gm over 4r. It's not necessary to bring the 4 out of the square root sign. I prefer to keep it that way anyway the question asks for it like this, okay? Now, you notice that this is much slower than our normal gravitational, uh, sorry, orbital velocity. The slower than a single star or single star in a system uh, and planet. How come? Because if you remember, the single star and planet, all right, the velocity of the orbit will be equal to gm over r. So the 
the, the binary stars actually orbit each other slower than if we have a single star and a planet around it. Okay, quite interesting phenomenon. Next, let's move on. Hence or otherwise, show that the orbital period of each star is given by this formula. Now, so over here, we have uh, orbit. Okay, sorry, it's not exactly a circle. This is the velocity v and this is the radius r. Okay, so how do we find out the uh, time taken for one orbit? The time taken for one orbit will be the circumference divided by the speed. So the circumference will be 2 pi r and the speed is given by our formula earlier, gm over 4r. Okay, so after some um, algebraic manipulation, okay, after some algebra, math, we obtain that the period will be 16 pi squared r cubed over gm. Um, this is actually quite similar to what we know from before, where t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over gm r cubed, except that this is for the single star, right? Single star and planet. Now, what about binary star? For binary star, it's 16 pi squared over gm r cubed. So this is for a binary star system. Okay. Now you notice that the period is much slower. Okay, it's about four times slower, which is kind of expected since the velocity is also slower. All right. So not not only do they rotate slower, they take longer to finish the orbit as well. Okay, show that the total energy of the binary star system is given by total energy is minus gm squared over 4r. Now, let's take a look. The total energy will be the Ke of the two stars plus the GPE of both masses. So there's something quite interesting about uh, the difference between the Ke and GPE. So suppose we have the mass m and the velocity v, and then suppose we have a mass m and the velocity v. So this guy, uh, let's call it A, this, this star A and this star B. This will be KEA. The KEA is calculated as half mv squared. Now this is star B, it has KEB, which is also calculated as half mv squared. But what about the GPE? The GPE is calculated as the total GPE of two objects. Now remember the GPE formula is GMM over the separation R, which means that both masses are already accounted for in the equation. So that's GMM over whatever the distance is, in this case, 2R. Okay, so in this case, so now we need to add in the total energy of all the objects. So the total energy will be KEA plus the Ke of star B, plus the GPE of the stars A and B. Okay, so that will be um, half mv squared plus half mv squared uh, minus, okay, gmm over 2r. Now, remember that um, v is equals to square root gm over 4r, which we found from the earlier equation. So now we can set, substitute this in as half, gm over 4r plus half okay let's just get rid of this half okay and so we're, go we're just going to put in one of the values uh, over here so it's gm over 4r minus uh gm squared over 4r minus gm squared over a uh, 2r okay right so this is going to give us minus gm squared over 4r this is very expected. This is like super, like this is something that we have always expected. How come? Because remember in any orbit, if the Ke uh, and the GPE and the total energy are always related by the Ke is the same as uh, total energy except that it's the sign is changed. And the GPE and total energy are like half of, uh, uh, twice of each other. So let me show you, okay? So the, uh, the, the, the total Ke will be gm squared over like 4r, alright? And then the GPE will be minus gm squared over 2r. Cool. And then the total energy will be minus gm squared over 4r. So 
So you can see that these two are the same except that the signs are different and then this one will be like multiplied by minus 2. Okay, so uh, this is how the relationship is between the Ke, total energy and GPE uh, in any orbital system. Okay, and that would be the end of our tutorial. Alright, I'll upload the solutions for the additional questions as well. Thank you for listening.